Hey Spuddies, Potomac Whiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civ 6 as Arabia. First thing I want to talk about is now that we have industrialization, our next big goal is to get research labs. The reason we want to get research labs is they give us a ton of science, but more importantly they lead to rocketry. Now we could, if we want to, just basically click on rocketry and go there as soon as possible. However, there is a slightly more efficient way to do this, and that is to go straight for chemistry because it takes two less techs and will allow us to use Fate to purchase the research lab and get to here a little bit quicker. Um, that's also partially why we went for industrialization to pick up coal power plants and stuff like that, because research labs do actually take power to get the maximum benefit from them. Again, I'm just super hardcore prioritizing getting my campuses and libraries up at this point because a single library is worth 10 science to me. Workshop completed in the capital, so I'm going to go ahead and get to work on the factory. This factory will give me plus three production in this city and an additional three production when it's powered. So we'll go straight for the coal power plant, which will also give me plus five production. So this will continue to not only improve the production in local cities, i.e. cities that are nearby and within range of this industrial zone, but also this primary city. And it'll give me power as well, which will lead into me getting research labs. Similar sort of logic here in Medina, if I work on the workshop, I'll be able to grab myself a campus in here very soon. And the reason I want a campus, even if it doesn't have very good adjacency, is that my campuses are really, really damn powerful. Now that I have the Vissel Banking card plugged in, my trade routes to my allies are incredibly powerful. If I trade with Plymouth, I get th two food, three production, 17 gold, one science, one f culture, and three faith, which is really, 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 really damn powerful. So I'm going to want to try to trade internationally with my allies. Similar sort of stuff in Aretium, workshop completed. I do want the holy site, but I think getting the factory in here will provide a ton of production in this local area. So that's what we want to do. I want you to think about building a factory as if you're building an extra mine in every city that's in range. And you basically, how you see what cities are in range is you go, uh, you start from here and every step you take away counts as one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and the maximum range is six without any modifiers. So for example, this industrial zone here will go one, two, three, four, five, six. It will hit basically every city down here. And then these two industrial zones up here will hit every city up here. Uh, you, that's pretty much what you want to do. You want to make sure that every city is covered by an industrial zone so that they can be powered when you eventually get your coal power plants and as well so they can get the extra production from the factory. Purchasing the shipyard in Araka because that'll double the production in this city and give me even more because I'll be working some of these coastal tiles as well. Let's go ahead and grab our alliance with Pachacuti again. I will do a military alliance and the reason I'm doing a military alliance is so that if I need to go to war with Rome again, I can do so without any issues. Madrasa completed in Damietta, giving me plus seven science and plus four faith, which is really damn valuable. I think I do want to go ahead and get the entertainment complex now because the entertainment complex gets upgraded at natural history with the zoo, which means I would have a ton of amenities helping cover my amenity problems. Because if you do look around here, you can kind of see this little symbol over the city. It means the city has negative amenities. So I want to start getting a little bit of amenities inside my empire to try to alleviate that amenity problem because it is giving me a minus five percent uh you know yield from my cities which at this point in the game five percent of my yields is actually quite a bit imagine basically every 20 turns one of the turns of the production of the city is being discarded so that's why you want to kind of make sure you have enough amenities just to same sustain your empire if your empire is big enough you basically don't have to care about amenities but my empire is still I would say I have a pretty sizable empire, but it's still relatively not amazingly huge. So I do want to care about amenities a little bit. The other really nice thing is that amenities get distributed throughout your empire. So if I get some extra amenities from building the entertainment complex and the arena here in Damietta, that will actually free up amenities to be distributed to other cities. Our spy is now established in Estergom, so I'm going to go ahead and gain sources. This will increase the success chance of all missions made by the spy. We can go ahead and recruit a great admiral. I'm going to go ahead and recruit uh, Yi Sun Sin. This will allow me to instantly create a ironclad, uh, which will give me the boost towards steel because I have a coal mine thanks to, uh, I think it's Damietta. No, Mecha, sorry. Mecha has a coal mine. Getting the ironclad will give me the extra part of the boost that I need for steel. So I get the science boost for steel, which is a little bit of extra science. And now I have a really strong unit by, you know, if I go ahead and increase Embalon and then use Santa Cruz, who will form an armada out of a naval unit, that will give me an extremely strong unit to the point where I could, if I wanted to, maybe consider going to war with Hungary to slow down their science and liberate uh, Dido. So that actually might be a thing that I want to do. I have the Niter to go ahead and build some 
um, frigates if I so wish. So perhaps after I get my coal power plant in my factory up in my capital, or I might even wait for the factory to be finished and then purchase the coal power plant and then go for frigates. I would have to swap in a card from naval production, but I think that might be an interesting idea to go ahead and take these guys on. The Madrasa just provides so much value that it's something that I'm prioritizing in all of my cities where possible. Plus seven science and plus eight faith. In terms of individual technologies on the way to chemistry, the only one that maybe matters a little bit is sanitation because it gives me a little bit of extra housing in some of my cities. So that's pretty good. So that would be the only one I would maybe beeline. So I'd probably go like sanitation into replaceable parts into chemistry. And that would be how I would navigate this. Because honestly, at this point, at this point, these wonders don't, or, or these buildings and wonders don't really matter all that much to me. In terms of distributing our trade routes throughout our empire, we want to look for cities that are having trouble growing to 10 population. So a good example of that is the city of Damascus. I want this city to hit 10 population, right? Because I'm getting pretty close to getting the rationalism card at enlightenment. Now I am going for mercantilism because that's a little bit more important to me, but I'm getting pretty close to wanting rationalism, which means any city that I have a... Um, campus built in, I want to get to 10 population. So I want to start thinking about where do I put my trade routes to help these cities grow. Damascus doesn't have a massive amount of growth. Um, it has plus four food. So I might want to consider maybe putting a farm triangle in and around here to help the city continue to grow, which means I want to maybe start thinking about builders as well pretty soon. I tend to find builders work best um, if you build them in waves. Now, looking at Medina, I could go for the workshop, the coal power plant and the factory, but the city has pretty good production. So I would maybe want to prioritize going for the um, campus in here. And now that I have this industrial zone, this forest tile, this um, lumber mill, isn't actually that important compared to this mine. This mine is slightly better. So what I might be able to do is get a builder up here to harvest that. I'll, I'll harvest this tile and that will allow me to get my workshop in a reasonable time and then I'll be able to harvest out the campus really, really quickly. We completed the holy site in Halab and I have the option of either hard building this or purchasing my way up to really quickly get the 10% yields. So what I'll do is I'll quickly just scroll through my list of cities and see if there's anywhere that I want to purchase a shipyard. And it looks like I don't have any more shipyards to purchase, so I'm going to go ahead and just swing into here, use my gold, although I do want to use my gold to purchase the coal power plant actually, so I will hard build the shrine and the temple and stuff. Sousa isn't the most amazing trade route, amazing trade route for me to get, however it will give me a little bit of food, a little bit of production, and that'll speed up how quickly the city grows, which will let me get to that all critical 10 population a little bit quicker. With that final spread on this missionary, I have completely converted my entire empire back to Yeetism, and we have pushed back Islam, and now I can start maybe thinking about spreading my religion a little bit further out, if I so want to. I don't have a lot to spend my faith on this game um, outside of things like madrasas. So now is the time to do that, right? So in Iraq, I probably won't be hard building my campus and uh, stuff in here. I might be purchasing those buildings with my faith. So now that I have my religion established, laid into the game, I can start using that for other benefits. And in fact, it might even be worth my while to purchase the amphitheater. But I've already invested a ton of production in here. So we'll see. Um, this is also a city that needs a trade route to help it continue to grow. So I will probably move this trader from Aleppo to Ostia to help the city to grow because it's just growing so incredibly slowly. Only plus three food. I need to get the city up to seven population so that I can place its harbor so the city will actually be productive and useful. Right, there is mercantilism allowing us to build... Um, uh, lumber mills on rainforest so that's going to mean that I'll want a couple of builders at some point here which means I am going to want to maybe swap around my government a little bit I still like it, what I would consider the key things here are natural philosophy and naval infrastructure those are my two key things and then these other things are kind of maybe swappable um, so trade confederation is really really nice but it's something I can take out for a short while and instead plug in for example the extra two bill charges from builders because I'll just get a lot more value from this in the short term. I would like to get Machiavellianism. I need to get my, my second spy built. It's not a major priority for me right now. I think it could be worth it though to plug it in because it is like a 50% production boost towards spies. But I might just go ahead and hard build my spies because I just have so many envoys that it's hard to justify taking out Merchant Confederation and I have so many international trade routes that it's hard to justify taking out Visselbanken. I also need to consider plugging in Press Gang. So I'm a little bit kind of stuck for choosing tiles right now or choosing improvements. But I think I've more or less built all of my harbor stuff right now. So I think it's okay to plug in Press Gangs that'll allow me to build frigates really quickly. And I think that's the best compromise that I can make with my government. We also need to find room for rationalism soon because this is going to be a massive boost to our science. So we have about five turns until we have to make that decision. Aleppo has grown to four population, which now allows me to build another district. And I think the district to build would be a campus in here. 
Um, that'll give me a decent amount of extra adjacency and stuff like that and stuff to play with. So I think a good campus, eh, it doesn't have to be really that good. So I think I'll just pop it down here on this tile right here and slowly build away at that campus. We just finished the factory in the capital, which is now giving us, if you look here, we're getting plus three from factory. We should also be getting plus three from factory in Halab, which again is like working another tile, right? So that's, that's the power of the factory is it improves all of the cities in the vicinity and not just the one that you build it in. So it's actually a very production efficient building in the sense that it provides you with a lot for a single investment into a city. Uh, I also want the coal power plant, but I could go ahead and purchase the coal power plant, giving me the extra three production from the factory, as well as another five production, which, you know, I could choose to go for frigates here, because I am building them very, very quickly. Or I could choose to get a spy, or I could choose to get a builder. Um, getting builders would be good, because I do have tiles that I want to improve, and this would be the most efficient place to build builders. However, I think... Man, do I bother liberating this? I think I just go Sim City and don't bother trying to liberate this, because... These cities are already 61 combat strength and my frigates are only 55 combat strength. So I don't know if it would be worth it to send frigates over here to liberate her. It would only be diplomatic favor that I would be trading to the AI. So I think in the end, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to opt not to go for the naval stuff. And instead, I'm just going to build uh, a few builders in this city and see if I can't get all of these tiles improved. Again, shrine in Halab, go for temple. Uh, we just finished the campus in Lugdunium, and we also built a couple of farms in here to give the city a little bit more housing, so we're up to 10 housing now, uh, which is really, really great. Very happy about that, and we can go ahead and get to work on the library and eventually the madrasa. Although I could go ahead and faith purchase here if I so choose, but I think the library is cheap enough that I would want to faith purchase the madrasa because that's a little bit more expensive. Beautiful, the rising smoke, humming machinery, another three era score. We don't need that era score right now. I probably would have been maybe good, like an optimization we could have done is not actually upgrading that coal power plant for a few turns and waiting for the era to take over. But, you know, we did it anyway. And now you can see if I look at Halab, it's actually getting six production from factory, which is like like a full a fully built mine, right? It's slightly better because it's six yield. It's like a mine that gives you only production and no food. So that's great. It's, it's essentially a factory that is powered is like your city working a really damn good mine tile that has no food on it, right? And it also provides that to every single city in range. So you can see here in the capital, we have a 60 production, which is about five production per population. So this is actually really crazy good. I'm also considering that I probably wanna be building my spaceport in my capital. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that pin and that'll just remind me that this is where I wanna put the spaceport later on in the game. Beautiful. The world ticks over. The era ends. I head into a new era. And because that be tested. Um, because I got enough era score in a dark age to get a golden age, I can make a heroic age dedication, which allows me to pick three of these things. Now, for example, Heartbeat of Steam is really damn good because it gives me a 10% production boost towards all industrial era and later wonders. But more importantly, it gives me my campus districts, their science adjacency becomes production adjacency, which is insane. I can also take reform the coinage. Remember, I am trading internationally. So my international trade routes getting buffed is fantastic. This is going to give me a huge amount of gold. And now it's the choice between Hicks and Dracones. If I was going to be trying to settle on this island, the other continent, I would maybe take Hicks on Dracones, but I could also just take two arms and go to war with one of my neighbors if I wanted to, because now I have a Cassus Belly which generates 75% less grievances. So this is basically like, if I want to be able to go to war without suffering diplomatic penalties, this is the, the, the bonus that I want to pick up. And also, if I go into my cities now and I look at the production, you can see here I'm getting plus eight from campus. So everywhere that I have adjacency on my campuses, you want to double that and then turn that into production. And that is the benefit that I'm getting from my campuses. So you can kind of see how all of the ideas and abilities of a game are starting to feed off each other. And you, you can use all these mechanics together to get really, really high production numbers. We also unlocked rationalism, which now rationalism is so good. And I'm already making so much gold for my trade routes that Merchant, Merchant Confederation actually loses a bit of value and rationalism becomes insane to plug in. So I'll plug in rationalism and this will absolutely jump my sides up. So you can see here, if I go into Cairo and I look at the actual individual um, libraries, you can see here I'm getting 12 science from that library and 14 science from the Madrasa. So it is a ridiculous amount of science that you get from working these tiles. 
Now we need to talk about what our next era is. Generally speaking, I have mercantilism and enlightenment. I could go ahead and pick up Reformed Church if I wanted to do something like that. Um, so one of the things I would like is I do want to get the zoo at some point. I would maybe like to get nationalism so that I can combine units together. I don't think urbanization is particularly important for me this game. However, public works is really nice for the extra 30% production towards builders and builders get an extra two charges, which is really, really good. It also opens up some governor titles. So these are pretty important to me. Natural history is pretty good again because of the zoo. But most importantly, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to efficiently get to ideas ideology and that's for a number of reasons because it gives me the commercial hub and harbor district adjacency bonus card which means now my harbors and my commercial hubs benefit from the same card it also gives me the um, ability to construct another spy and it gives me access to my tier 3 government so really I'm trying to figure out how do I get to ideology in a reasonable way and it's probably going to involve going for uh, civil engineering Although, if I do want to do some kind of a war, maybe nationalism is the one that I want to go for. Because at this stage of the game, I could probably redirect to, for example, bombards. And just churn out a ton of bombards with all my nitre. And attack Rome, if I wanted to. Because I do have the Golden Age war thing. And Rome hates me and I could get Pachacuti in on that war. The problem is, Rome has like really, really strong cities. I'm not sure where this combat strength is coming from. But I think I could do some damage to Rome. So I may as well use my bonuses. I'm going to head for nationalism and we'll get to work on building some bombards in some of our cities. Again, I'm going to be building a library because I want to faith purchase the madrasa ideally because it's a little bit more expensive. It's a little bit harder to build. So I want to save my faith for the harder to build things because they give more benefit in the long run. Now, when you're playing Arabia, it's really, really important to note that this costs 190 production to build up a Goda, but it only takes 35 faith. So you always want to faith purchase your tier three building and that'll give me a little bit of diplomatic favor. And talking about Halab now, I think it might be a good idea for me to start a bombard in this city. This city um, has no real way to do anything to improve it right now. It needs housing and I have no way to get housing in here. The city just has no way to get housing. So what will I do? Well, I could, for example, I could work these projects in here to get a little bit more value. Or I could go ahead and start the idea of maybe a war. And two things that I might be able to consider here is getting a couple of privateers to kind of pillage Rome's coastline. That could be very interesting for me. Um, or just going for bombards to have really, really strong siege units. And I think going for the bombards is the right choice here because it'll allow me to conduct a war against Rome. Now that I have metal casting, the other thing I could have done is gone for sewers to get extra housing. But I think we're kind of committed to the idea of war. And I already have crossbowmen and Mamluks. So these are the upgrade units. The field cannon and the cuirassier are the upgrade to the units that I already have. I have a couple of Mamluks like lying around over here. So this would mean a couple of cuirassiers and a few field cannons to be able to use and conduct war with. So that's probably going to be the next move. Um, they have renaissance walls in here, which I mean, I don't think siege support units work anymore. So I think the main thing I'm going to need is just a bunch of bombards and then ideally maybe a great general. But the problem is these generals apply to the modern atomic era and these are industrial era units. So probably a great general is out of the question. It might seem a little bit strange here, but I actually am going to harvest these rainforest tiles because I would rather put mines on them because mines just, I feel like are a little bit better because they can't burn down. And I could, I could gold purchase the madrasa, but I'm going to go ahead and faith purchase it. Kaboom, seven signs, two faith per turn. Not the most amazing one, but it does give the city a little bit more housing and will allow the city to grow. I'm going to take it off production focus and instead give it a more balanced focus and I'll even micromanage it a little bit to tell it to work the good tiles. This city is also more or less finished, so it might be a good idea for me to pick up bombards or stuff like that. I think the siege tower upgrades to medics and I think medics are good because they give healing to adjacent units. So I want to get like a couple of medics to sustain my army a little bit. I think that's a good move. So I'll get a siege tower or two in here. Again, we're harvesting this tile uh, next turn when this workshop finishes so that we can build our campus just that little bit quicker. Now that our spy has established itself in Hungary, we can go and start stealing gold. I could steal the booster radio and stuff like that, but this has the highest success chance and our goal is to try to get our spy to level up. So we want to take the highest percentage chance success mission. Now it's important to remember when you're getting ready to build a campus, you don't want to place it down on the forest. You would ideally like to harvest it because that'll get me 101 production and take the construction time on this campus down from nine turns to six, which means essentially I've turned this forest into a slightly faster campus, which is really nice. Thinking about Damascus, um, I could use the city to help produce things for the war, but I think I would be much rather be going for my holy sites in here. I want to make sure I'm not committing too many of my resources to the war. I do want to commit some of my resources to the war, but not everything. And I think I can wait a couple of turns in this city to go for the Madrasa. So I would maybe be better off going for a holy site in here and just using up a kind of semi-useless desert tile for a district. Oof, big mega colossal eruption over here. And that did do damage to my um, my arena, which is not the end of the world because it's a quick repair. 
but still a bit of a pain in the butt. There's ballistics, we now have access to these two guys. I'm gonna work on sanitation so that I can get medics, as well as the sewer building, which will allow me to improve my units. In my capital, I could be going for campus research grants, but since I'm planning to go to war, I need to start doing a bit of unit counting. I have one, two, three, four, five uh, ranged units, ranged class units, so I would want one more ranged unit so that I can combine them all together into cores, and then I would ideally get another three to be able to eventually combine them into armies. But that's not a priority right now. I want to just make sure my units are combined into cores because that makes them stronger individual units. And ideally I would get a couple more Mamluks or a couple more Quirisiers. These guys can be upgraded if I so choose. However, now is not the time to upgrade them because um, it would cost me nearly 300 gold each. And there is a card that I can plug in in my policy here. Um, that is the professional army card that will allow me to build them much quicker. And really I'm waiting for bombards to be completed. And in fact, since I'm waiting for bombards, it makes the most sense to actually be building bombards because you actually can't boost the production of bombards so while i don't have production boosting cards plugged in i should build units that i can't boost the production of temple finished in mecca purchase the pagoda the city is now essentially complete until i can get a trader in here and get the city to 10 population um so probably best bet is to be building units in here as well and i think bombards again i would want to have maybe three bombard cores which will eventually become artillery armies that's kind of the direction I want to take things. I just got Ferdinand Magellan, so I want to look for a luxury coastal resource that I don't have access to in my local area, and that'll probably be turtles. Uh, I do have turtles here actually, so never mind, but I want to look for one that I can maybe get my hands on um, that I wouldn't otherwise be able to. Um, it looks like turtles is the rarest one that I have, but I do actually have access to turtles, interestingly enough. So I'll probably just go ahead, yeah, I'll just throw them down on some turtles. Amphitheater completed in Ostia. Now is the time for me to start improving these tiles. It's fantastic. The city still needs to grow, however, so it's not going to be super useful for a very long time. I don't think this uh, tile is really, really great for me to be working right now. Neither is this one, but those are kind of the only real options that I have. But I could go for an aqueduct in this city if I so choose, but I'll probably just go ahead and build a trader in here to be able to send trade routes out. Aredium has its factory. I think I'm going to go ahead and purchase the coal power plant in here. Uh, this city just needs a little bit too much production, but having the coal power plant will power this factory, giving production to all of the local cities. You can see in here, if I refresh the city, it's now getting the plus three production from the factory, and that'll eventually be plus six production when this is built up. And then that um, coal power plant will be worth even more when I finish this aqueduct and dam, because remember, each aqueduct and dam gives plus two adjacency, and the coal power plant benefits from adjacency. If we look at the city of Damietta, it has an aqueduct, it has an entertainment complex, it has a harbor, and it has a campus. The only thing that's really missing is a holy site and I think a holy site right here would give extra adjacency to this campus bringing it up to a plus three adjacency campus meaning it gets more benefit from rationalism so we're going to place that holy site right there I'm trying to do a mixture of building my army in cities where I no longer need infrastructure and continuing to build infrastructure everywhere else it looks like uh Georgia wants to do a joint war on Trajan I'm not really ready to do a war and I won't be until I have nationalism it looks like one of the AIs um wow actually the Incas did a flood on me um, and wiped out two of my farms, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but there's not much I can do about that. It might also be good for me to get a couple of military engineers this game to be able to build railroads and roads themselves, because um, you can move units a little bit easier. I think what I might do is after I have sanitation, I'm going to stop off for steam power and use a couple of military engineers to build railroads to be able to easily move my units around. Try to use every game mechanic so I can kind of show you guys how they work even though I wouldn't always use them. Let's go ahead and place a lumber mill in Ostia. The city now is finally starting to reach something resembling a reasonable amount of production. It took a lot of investment to get the city up and running, but I'm very happy that we have managed to get it up and running. A lot of aid requests are passing this game. That's something I should be keeping an eye on because the diplomatic victory points can start getting out of hand. Uh, looks like Patrick Cutie actually triggered a thing on himself. So if we look at the diplomacy screen here, yeah, we're up to six points, so I'm not too worried about that just yet. Looks like Rome is going to win that one, so that's his one. And then we'll keep an eye on these other ones. We just want to make sure nobody's running away with this. I could get the boost for chemistry. However, the boost for chemistry is having a level 2 alliance. And I think I should be pretty close to having a level 2 alliance with him. It's actually quite a bit away. So getting the boost for chemistry here is not a terrible one. If we look, though, Hungary is going to be getting another great scientist right after me. So I might pass on this one. Let him get the kind of weaker one. And then I can pick up a slightly better one, like the um, Charles Darwin, who will give me 500 science for each natural wonder adjacent to this tile. And then I'll let someone else pick up this kind of weaker one as well. 
So if we look for a natural wonder that we can get a lot of value from, I want to look for a multi-tile natural wonder ideally. Like for example, we get a thousand signs from that one. Or the Sahara El Beta. So I think that's the one that we want to go for. Although I'll never get open borders with Hungary while he's denouncing me. When is his next denunciation? Yeah, so I'll never be able to get in there without declaring war on him. So I might have to just settle. Might just have to settle for a thousand science here, which is fine. A thousand science is pretty damn good. Successfully stole 488 gold from uh, Hungary. So now we can promote this guy. And generally speaking, um, Technologist is pretty good. I think Gorilla Leader is very weak. And I think Satchel Charges is pretty good. But I'm going to take Technologist here in case I want to steal a bit of science from him. Because he is currently still ahead of me in science. I'm going to go ahead and renew my friendship um, with Persia. And I'll send him an embassy because it's only 50 gold. Let's make sure we get open borders with him too, because he'll pay me a little bit of gold as well. Medina has completed a library. Let's go ahead and faith purchase the Madrasa. I think Araka, I wanted to faith purchase the Madrasa as well. My science has now started to get completely out of control. Um, the city doesn't need housing, so we'll work on the factory and the coal power plant. So very rarely will I keep um, jungle tiles around, but this is like the perfect situation in which I would want to keep them around, is when a city is desperate for production and has no way to get it. Um, I might actually swap this tile. Although the city seems to be doing fine without that tile right there. Jesus, he's... So it looks like um, Pachachuti is trying to use the Soothsayer on Bologna, but is instead actually just yeeting my city of Lugdunum. Lugdunum, which is kind of annoying. I do have a quadrireme here that I could upgrade to a frigate to assist in the war against Rome. Um, it's not a terrible idea. I kind of like it. Didn't I have a second quadrireme? I did. It's over here. So we'll get those guys moving down here and we'll start to use them for the war. We might even combine them together into a core. Now that we have sanitation, we have steam power for railroads. Our next step is to, ideally, again, we would be going for chemistry, but I'm kind of diverting for a bit of a war. So I might head up for battleships to pick up oil and then maybe pick up hangars and artillery or something like that. But I think, I think going for uh, refining is a good way to do this because it'll give me access to oil and the ability to get battleships. It allows me to turn my coal into military power. Speaking of coal, how much coal did I actually find this game? Because that is going to be an important part of my strategery. If we look here, it's going to highlight these because these have coal power plants in them. Looks like I only had one copy of coal in my entire empire, which is really less than ideal. If there was some coal over here, I might actually consider settling that. I'll spend a thousand gold to get another copy of coal. I really like that move. Now, if we're planning the ideal city to, to settle in, if I settled here, okay, I would get a good harbor. I would get an aqueduct and I would get a good industrial zone right there. So if we're talking about a city that will be able to fend for itself, I'm thinking harbor, city center, aqueduct right there and an industrial zone. Boom. This city is now well developed and then I can throw a campus down like right here. So this looks like a no brainer. I'm going to spend a thousand gold to get another city, mainly for access to that coal. There's also salt up here that might be worth settling for. Um, we'll see about that. We're putting a farm triangle over here in Damascus to give this city a little bit of extra food because it's struggling to grow to 10 population. And we'll probably fill in this tile with a farm as well because that'll give it even more farm adjacency and stuff like that. Continuing to steal gold from Hungary again because it's a really high percentage chance success mission, which gives us the ability to upgrade our spy, which will lower the chance that he gets captured in the long run, which means we can start doing more risky missions if we so choose. I would like units to be cheaper to produce with production. Okay, so this is really, really important. Um, the actual only choice for this thing is for units to be cheaper by production, because if you make units cheaper with production, it actually makes them cheaper with faith and gold as well. The only time you wanna pick one of these is if your civilization has bonuses for these things and you wanna block other saves from being able to produce units cheaper um, using production. But I feel like production is like just the best one, so I'll put two votes into that. And I will say uh, trading with trade city-states is a good one, because there's a few of those on the map. Looks like scientific city-states went by and units are now half production to produce. So this is actually amazing. It's a bit of a double-edged sword because the AI gets a huge amount of production from their cities. So they'll actually be really, really good at producing units too, which is you know kind of bad for me. But it does mean that I'll be able to um, get my units out that I need to be able to actually conduct my war really well here. So I'm not planning on building naval units, so we're going to pop that out. I think we can get rid of serfdom because we're not building builders anymore. And what we want to do is we want to have units to be cheaper to produce, uh, sorry, cheaper to upgrade, and then ideally cheaper to produce. Now we already have a 50% discount on unit production, so I could instead go for retinues here, and that'll allow me to produce more uh, bombards uh, for the amount of nitre that I have. And I think retinues here seems like a pretty damn good move because I'll be able to mass produce bombards to run over Rome. See here, I'm, I'm one-turning bombards in my capital, which is insane. Um, legitimately insane. 
In Halab, I'm probably going to get to work on Quirisiers. They cost 20 iron. Oh, sorry. This is to upgrade units, isn't it? Yeah, I shouldn't have plugged that card in. That was a big dumb move on me. I just I had a brain fart moment and I plugged in the wrong card. How close am I to getting cavalry? I'm only a few turns away from getting cavalry. And they're of similar combat strength to Quirisiers. Quirassiers. I think I'm going to work on Quirassiers first. But I do want to plug in the military production card for cavalry. Because having a bit of cavalry is really nice because they can run around and pillage stuff for you and kill units. There's nationalism. Let's get to work on civil engineering. That is another governor title. Remember, we get a lot of value from governor titles. Um, if we're thinking about where we want to position things, I think Pingala is now better off being moved to Eretium um, because it's a slightly higher population city and Pingala scales off of the population of the city thanks to the connoisseur and researcher. I think getting grants would be pretty reasonable too. And eventually we do want space initiative. However, we are not in a rush to do that. So we will just kind of um, retool things a little bit and then I'll maybe get another governor. I'll go ahead and appoint Reina and I will pop her into, which is my best harbor in my empire? That's generally how you want to decide where you put Reina is you try to find your best harbor. It looks like my best harbor is in Araka. So I go ahead and assign Reina in Araka. And if you're wondering what I was doing there, I basically pressed nine to activate the empire map mode. And then I was just looking at the gold adjacency of each of my harbors in my empire. And it looked like Araka had the highest one. So I grab Arena and I assign her to Araka and I'll explain briefly why you want to do that. You want to put her in Araka because her second promotion is gives you double adjacency from harbors in the city, which will also apply to the um, to the building, the shipyard, which means I will actually get uh, plus 15 production from this shipyard instead of plus 10. It doesn't double the doubling. It just doubles the base amount. So if it goes from 5 to 10, it'll go from 5 to, uh, it'll go from 10 to 15 again. So that's a huge amount of production in this city for a couple of governor titles. Bit of a problem is that I don't have a supply of iron. So I need to look around and I think it was Bologna that was giving me iron. So I'm going to go ahead and take Suzerainty, Suzerainty of Bologna again because I think they were the one who was giving me a decent amount of iron per turn. And I really need that iron um, to be able to start producing railroads. I'm going to basically try to railroad up all of our border so that we can sort of see surge in through. So we're going to start upgrading units to field cannons. Now that we have the 50% discount card plugged in, it's going to use up a lot of our gold, but I think that's a pretty okay thing to do. Um, why can't you be upgraded to cuirassiers? Oh, you upgrade to knights. That's actually really bad because I will not have knights for a long time. So these mamluks actually won't be much use for me, but uh, there'll be a little bit of use. We'll get all these field cannons upgraded. So we basically just halved the amount of gold that it cost us to update our army, which is great. It's exactly the kind of thing that you want to do. Um, this trader, I could repeat that trade route, but I could maybe instead trade with Buenos Aires, getting that extra envoy, which is great. Gives me suzerainty, suzerainty of Buenos Aires, and also gives me plus two production in all my workshops. I don't have a lot of workshops, but still it's a great one to pick up because it means anywhere that I have an industrial zone, I get a little bit of extra production. Generally speaking, if you're not going for a culture game, you want to go for archaeological museums. And the reason you want to do that is because archaeological museums allow you to efficiently convert production into culture and tourism um, once you get the archaeologist. Whereas if you're going for more of a lots of cities with art theater squares, which I'm not going for, you go for art museum because they scale really well with great people point generation. It's like a little tip there. Although I would argue that archaeologists are usually just always almost always better. Combining our units together, excellent. We have uh, two field cannon armies, which are probably not super strong, but once we have our bombards in range, we'll be in great shape. Time to pick up a thousand signs, thanks to Charles Darwin being adjacent to these uh, natural wonders. Boom, thank you, thousand signs in the bag. That'll boost us all the way to military science, giving us cavalry, as well as access to the uh, military academy building, which will give us even more housing in the city of Lugdunum as well as the ability to produce cores and armies and stuff like that. So we'll make our way through these military engineers who I'm going to be using for railroads and we'll, um, we'll keep churning along. Looks like an Appease the Gods competition has opened up. I do have some units that I wanted to use for that. I'll go ahead and get myself another suit there and I'll get these guys in position. Uh, the rest of my army is still kind of just moving in the direction of the front line. A little bit of a long way to walk, um, which is kind of why I'm trying to get the railroad sort of heading up that way. So I'm trying to get a railroad that goes all the way to my capital up this way because that'll speed up reinforcements and allow people to hit the front line a little bit quicker. We got the temple in Damascus. That means, um, wait, why is the city not following my religion? It's because the city grew, um, which means I will need to get a missionary over to this city, convert it, which didn't quite do enough. Okay, well, we'll have to wait. 
Let us yeet this spearman into the volcano. We'll do the swordsman next. I don't really care about those guys. I don't need to keep them around. Settle the city over here, like we were talking about, and what we want to do. We want to place the two most important pieces of infrastructure. That's the aqueduct and the harbor, because that's going to give the city the housing and the production and growth to be able to actually do anything. And then we'll just slowly work on the harbor. And eventually what we'll do is we'll use our gold to purchase things like the granary and the monument in here. And we'll also get ourselves a builder over here at some point as well. But for now, this city isn't a priority for me because I'm working on this war. Here's a little tip. I don't want to upgrade my quad dry rooms to frigates because that will cost me nitre. What I want to do is wait until I actually unlock battleships and upgrade them straight to battleships. And that'll give me... Uh, I won't take nitre to upgrade them. And then I can use nitre for more bombards. Sacrifice my swordsman in. Currently doing okay on the appease the gods. I would like to do better. I might go ahead and get rid of these mamluks because they're not going to be useful until they're tanks. So may as well get fed into the volcano. I have more cuirassiers hitting the front line. I have three military engineers producing uh, these things. I could also use these guys to rush my dams, but it's not my plan. So there's a, this is a bit of a weird bug, right? This unit has a full movement, so it uh, and it's going through like walkable terrain, but it's just this weird thing where it like, won't go straight through units of the same class. It's like a weird movement bug that I've been seeing in my games, um, and it really bothers me. I'm going to send two of my engineers back here to start building railroads in my empire, and then one of these guys, one of my engineers, is going to be building railroads right on the border so I can like move units in and around here really easily. This city will need housing soon, um, because it's about to hit its first growth limit, which is when it's one population away, away from its maximum. And I do want another district in here, so I'll slowly work on the sewer. Unfortunate timing on this thousand year flood, it hit my bombard as I was coming to reinforce the front line. Not the end of the world, I will just get a medic to help restore that thing's health. And um, we're continuing to build railroads to make it easier to get units to the front line. I think the next step for us is uh, we have a little bit of oil. So the next step is to get artillery. That's going to make our bombard units really, really damn powerful. We also have a governor title. That's something we're considering. We just picked up civil engineering. And you can see now if I upgrade my quadriums, they go straight to battleship for only one coal. I do need a little bit more gold. So I think I should probably trade off some of my diplomatic favor for a little bit of gold. So I'll go ahead and talk to Patrick Cutie and say, hey, what will he give me for 100 gold or 100 diplo favor? You'll give me about 540 gold, I would imagine. No, oh, I was a little bit off. 510, thank you. And I'll be able to use that gold now to uh, upgrade both of these battleships. And I think I will keep these as individual battleships because they have uh, 70 range combat strength and they have three range. So I'll be able to hammer away at Rome from a long distance without suffering retaliation. Um, that'll use up a little bit of my coal, but it's not a big deal. I'll probably be getting rid of this ironclad um, because using up a little bit too much coal. And I don't have this coal improved over here. In fact, I might go ahead and send this builder to go get that coal improved. Although I want two build charges on that one uh, if I'm being... I'm being square, so I might improve this tile and then run you all the way over there as well. Yeah, I like that idea. Right, next up, we definitely want to get to mobilization so we can start combining our units together for this war. And I know we've been gearing up for this war for about 16 turns, but we're like literally on the cusp of declaring. So I think now is the time to go. We'll go ahead and declare the Golden Age War for 25 grievances. And we only take a very small amount of grievances for the actual fighting. And we can start to bombard these districts. These districts are very, very powerful, so it's going to take us a very long time to break them down without artillery. Once we have artillery, things will be going really, really well for us. Uh, these field cannons aren't actually going to be super useful for this war, but they will provide us with a little bit of power to actually kill units, because they're reasonably strong at killing units. And things like the cuirassiers and stuff like that can act as a force to run around and do some damage as well. Let's make sure we get our medics in position too. I'm trying to upgrade and maintain a well-oiled army. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a Mani. The reason I'm grabbing a Mani is first of all for Eriscore, second of all so that I can plant her in a city. A Mani isn't the most useful governor in the world, but I can find somewhere that maybe might struggle with a little bit of housing. For example, like Jeddah, I could plug her in there. Um, but probably my best bet is a city like Aleppo, that it doesn't have any access to fresh water. I can plug her in there, and thanks to the fact that I have the audience chamber, she will give the city a little bit of housing and amenities, which will be really helpful. Still combining my cavalry and stuff together, I'm still mass producing units, I have cuirassiers on the way, all that jazz. It's all going well for me. I think I would like some units, so I might get another bombard here. We got the aqueduct and the dam in Aretium. You can see here the city is a massive production, massive housing. That's why I wanted all that food. Um, Definitely need to get the holy site online here, and I might even go for the encampment, actually, um, to allow me to build units on the front line really, really efficiently and effectively. Uh, the other thing that I could do is to just build units on the front line, but 
Um, the real thing here is I want to efficiently build units, so I'll go for the encampment. Madrasa available in Aleppo. We just finished the ancient walls. Faith purchased the Madrasa, nine science per turn, and a little bit of faith. And now the city can probably go towards this building me a spy. I also need to get that oil online. Yeet the Mamluk into the volcano, and we'll do the second Mamluk next turn. You can see here, appease the gods. We are doing okay. We're doing okay, but I think we will win this with the two Mamluk Yeets. The good news is uh, Rome basically fed their army into a volcano. Um, Stand united as friends with Eleanor. So you can see here, this bombard took a big hit, but because my medic is beside it, it healed a lot of health. It healed actually 35 health in a single turn, which is a lot. And it also got a little bit of experience. So we're just slowly going to break down these districts. We're not in a rush in any sense of the imagination. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and have you rest there and have my second medic heal you up a little bit quicker. And uh, I don't typically use medics, but, you know, I think they actually do have a lot of value. And I want to be trading with my allies to provide the most gold and also give me food and production. It's a lot of food and production from trading with Pasargade. A temple completed in Damietta. Faith purchased a pagoda. Boom. Science jumps up a little bit. All that great stuff when we can get to work on repairing the entertainment complex. And we'll also yeet that Mamluk into the volcano. Pagoda in Iraq as well. Boom. A nice little chunk of science, faith and culture. And now this city is probably in a good shape to help assist with the war. I think I would like one more battleship, although I'm a little bit worried about my coal. My coal consumption. Maybe one battleship would be fine. And we'll get into position to start hitting Rome. Now these cities are going to take a very long time to break down. Um, because we're only hitting the fortifications really. So it takes a while to break a city in the late game. Because they have such high combat strength. And doubly so if there's an encampment in front of it. But we can kind of sidestep this encampment. I would like maybe three cities off Rome. Maybe take these three and three liberate Nazca. Something like that. Or maybe just completely kill Rome. Take all of their land. Um, I think that would fit really well into my game plan. They're very very well defended. But if we use artillery to our advantage and then make sure we're using what we want to also be looking for by the way is we want to be looking for districts in these cities that we can pillage with our cavalry um so if we look at the combat strength of these guys yeah they should be they should be fine to run in here and get ready to pillage that next turn and i'll do the same thing with my cavalry cavalry aren't stopped by um zone of control so they can run in and pillage all these districts and the reason we want to pillage the districts is because if i hover over the city here you'll see down here it'll say plus six from districts what that means is the city is getting plus six combat strength from having districts so if we take if we rip down all the districts in the city it becomes easier to actually kill the city a bit of a choice in here i could harvest this but i think i'm going to go ahead and improve this quarry because it'll make this um industrial zone here slightly higher adjacency which is always really nice for a science game and you can see here thanks to the railroad i can basically move a unit from the capital also here's another little bit of weir weirdness again there's some weird interaction here that i can't like skip over this unit like i should be able to move to here but my unit is just like having a pathing bug it's a it's a very annoying bug that i don't like and a lot of units have this problem all right i'm going to call that the end of the episode however i love you all very much and i'll see you guys next time also just take a quick moment here 35 health that's the power of medics right, i'll see you guys next time Bye bye